G'day everyone, today I want to introduce you to a little library I've made for P5.js called P5.FilterShader, which can help you enhance the visuals of your P5.js projects. P5.js already has a filter function, but there's only a handful of options for it and it only works in 2D mode. So what the filter shader library allows you to do is to easily apply a filter to the canvas or an off-screen graphics object using a shader. This functionality isn't new to P5, but I've wrapped it up in a convenient package and will hopefully make shaders a bit more accessible, letting you add some really cool effects to your sketches. In this video, I'll go over how to set up and use the library, as well as go through a few examples. You'll find links to everything in the description, so if you want, you can play around with the examples while I go through them. If you have no idea what a shader is or how to use them in P5.js, I've got an intro video that you can watch to come up to speed. First things first, how do you add the library to your project? I've got a blank P5 sketch open in the online P5 editor. By default, the editor will show you the sketch.js file, but if you come over here, you can see all the files in your project and we wanna look at the index.html file. In here, you'll see a script tag for the P5 library and this online editor also puts in the sound library. And what we need to do is add our script tag in here for the p5.filtershader library. To do that, open up the GitHub page linked in the description and find the get the library section. And there you can simply copy and paste the script tag into your index.html and make sure you add it after the P5 library. And that's it, p5.filtershader is now part of your sketch. If you don't wanna link the hosted version of the file, you can also go to the releases page on the GitHub and download the minified or unminified files and link them as you would any other local file. Again, just make sure that you link it after the P5 library. To use the library, you'll of course need a shader. I'll get into some examples of some filter shaders in just a minute, but for the moment, I'm gonna assume you've already got a vertex and a fragment shader. You can load these into P5 using the load shader method in the preload function, which will return a P5 shader object. You can then draw your sketch as you normally would. And then once you've finished drawing, you can call the filter shader function and pass in your shader object, which will apply that shader to the canvas. The filter shader function will automatically pass your shader two bits of information. Firstly, there's the image you're gonna be filtering in the form of a sampler 2D. And secondly, a 2D vector, which holds the resolution of the image. These are called filter underscore background and filter underscore res respectively. At the time of making this video, the filter shader library is in its very early stages. So the number, names, and types of these uniforms might change in the future. You'll find the most up-to-date information on the GitHub page linked in the description. All right, that covers the basics of the library. Let's get into some examples of it in use. The first example is very basic. I've just drawn some colorful shapes on the screen. And when you click your mouse, we apply the filter and it's now grayscale. You can see at the top of the sketch, I'm using the preload function to load in my shader files, which are called filter vert and filter frag for the vertex and the fragment shaders respectively. And you'll note that the main canvas is actually not in WebGL mode, but we can still use a shader on it. The library uses WebGL behind the scenes, but you don't need to worry about it for the canvas that you're drawing on. After the shape drawing is done, if the mouse is pressed, I'm calling filter shader globally. This runs the shader on the main canvas, which means we will see the output displayed immediately. I'm gonna skip over the vertex shader because it's very generic and if you want, you can open it up in the examples linked in the description. But if we go into the fragment shader, you can see I've got a position vector here that comes from the vertex shader and that's about all we need to know about the vertex shader. I've also got the filter underscore background and filter underscore res uniforms that I mentioned earlier. And in the main function, I'm simply reading the filter background at the current pixel position to get the color information. And then I average the R, G and B values before outputting the average in all three color channels, which turns our image to black and white. Obviously, this isn't a very complex example, but hopefully it gives you an idea of how simple it is to add a shader to filter your sketch. Moving on to a slightly more advanced example, this is called a posterize effect, where each color channel is restricted to just a few values, which gives us the bands in the output. Just like the last example, I'm loading in my shader in the preload function. You can see I'm using an off-screen graphic, which is made with the create graphics function, which is half the width of the main canvas. In the draw function, I turn on some multicolored lights that move around a bit, and I'm drawing a white sphere in the center. All of this is done on the off-screen graphic, so we can't see anything until we draw it onto the main canvas, which is what I do here, drawing it on the left-hand side. I then calculate the number of bands based on the mouse position and set that uniform inside the shader, just like you'd do normally. And then I use that shader to filter the image of the sphere. I can then display the output of the filter on the right hand side of the screen, giving us a before and after view of the filter shader. If we jump into the fragment shader again, you can see it's not that different from the previous example. I've got an extra uniform in here called num underscore bands, which is the one we set from our sketch. Just like before, I read the pixel color of the filter underscore background, and then I do some math which snaps the values of each color channel to its band, and then I return the pixel color. 
So that was a very quick look at the filter shader library. This has barely scratched the surface of what you can do with it. I've got a few videos planned that'll use this library to create some more advanced effects. So make sure you're subscribed if you wanna see them when they come out. You can find links to everything I've talked about plus some extra examples in the description. Making a library like this is completely new to me, so I'm sure it won't be perfect on the first try or even the 10th for that matter. So if you find any issues, please just let me know either here or on the GitHub and I'll try to fix them up. I'm really excited to see how you're gonna use this library in your sketches, so please share them with me at Barney underscore codes on Twitter. If you wanna see some other cool things that you can do with shaders in P5.js, you can watch this video here. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again soon.